let's just sew whatever. Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the Elaine handbag. This is a pattern by me. Can you get out of here? Um, and here she is. So this is a great big bag and I will explain to you the name of the pattern. So my sister Emily requested the Emily tote bag. And so that bag was my first pattern. And then this bag is a similar size. However, the middle is where the fabric is mostly showcased and that is Emily's middle name. So Elaine, anyway. So I absolutely love this bag. It's great if you don't have a ton of fabric and you just wanna like showcase a center piece. Um, and it comes together really fairly easily. I mean, it's just a bunch of squares at the end of the day. Um, we added the V-shaped front pocket and the exterior flapped hidden pocket. These are all options within the pattern. I kind of go over that with you. And then the top zipper panel. Um, one thing I did add that is not within the sewing pattern is a slip pocket inside. So a section slip pocket. Otherwise, we have such a cute bag. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you're not subscribed, be sure to click that button anyway, or I mean, hit it. I don't know. Hit the button. Subscribe. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy. Bye. All right, you guys, so let's get started on making the Elaine handbag. Um, please keep in mind, there are so many different ways to make this bag. Um, my patterns always take forever because I like them to be kind of like a choose your own adventure so that you can really make it unique to your own. Um, so I'm gonna show you this page here, which shows you all the different ways you could make it. These are just little sketches I did, so they don't look incredible. Um, but on the one I'm gonna be showing you today, we are going to be doing um, the exterior hidden pocket as well as the v-shaped pocket so that I can show you both options in this video um, so and then I decided to go with mini handles so again tons of different options different ways to cut it so make sure you read this over first um, so that'll be three inches wide by 18 inches tall I'm not showing you how to make the handles in this video. I just filmed a tutorial on double-sided handles. So that's what these look like. So there's fabric on one side and vinyl on the other. So if you guys are interested in that tutorial, feel free to look for it. Um, and then I'll talk about the inner facings that I used as well. So I'm using vinyl and canvas for this bag. This is my main panel. And I used Woven Fuse and Decaville Light on the main panels. Um, and then the closure, I've decided to do the zipper panel top closure. And then for the handle connectors, I decided to use, um, to show you guys the, um, the fancier connectors. These are some of my absolute favorite. Uh, they are very similar and a lot of inspiration was taken from the Louise barrel bag from Swoon, um, but these are a lot longer so that they're easier to sew on a domestic or an industrial and so that there's plenty of reinforcement for the user of the bag. Um, I won't be adding a crossbody strap to this bag, but I will add the connectors in case whoever purchases it wants that. Um, so yeah, we will get started. We need a seven inch or longer all purpose zipper. I'm gonna be using zipper by the yard for this bag. So I'm going to cut them one inch longer than the um, suggested size so that we have plenty to work with. Um, actually, okay. I'm going to cut my zipper by the yard to eight inches and 20 inches, just, just in case. Um, I know a lot of you guys have asked if I would sell hardware kits for certain bags, but there are just so many options. 
and so many different ways to make it your own that it's just not possible. I don't want to limit you to any one way of making the bag. So um, yeah, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so these connectors may seem a little bit daunting, so you can definitely use um, the additional cut list to cut the simple handle connectors, which are just um, basic squares. But I'm gonna give you some tips on how to cut these. If you'd like, Ben will help me. Um, so I'm using template pieces, which makes it a lot easier, but you could just use tape or interfacing on your pattern piece to make it a little stronger. Um, but keep in mind, when you're tracing it out, you're adding a ballpoint pen line, obviously, or whatever tracing pencil you use. So you want to cut, not your cat's whiskers. Can you go away? Thank you. Um, you want to cut next to that line inside. So I always like to start, so you can see. Um, and then if need be, you can kind of just rough cut them out of your vinyl. You're never gonna be able to use every single piece anyway. It'll be okay. Um, and then you wanna make long cuts if you can. So I like to start at this tip here. And if you have long, sharp scissors, it should just be one smooth cut. And then you can cut there and there. And then on this line. And then again, you can make this one long cut and stop at that tip and then cut in. So you really shouldn't have any ballpoint pen lines on your connector when you're finished cutting it. And then I like to add a strip of interfacing to the very center that is three quarter inch wide by however long your connector is just about. So kind of cut it like that. And this will help reinforce your connector as well as give you a very straight line to fold it on so that you know this is exactly three quarter inch wide for your strap connector. So hope that helps. So I've got my connectors here. I did go ahead and interface them with a scrap of Decaville light down the center. Um, again, that's just gonna add a little bit of reinforcement, make it last a little bit longer. And I'm gonna go ahead and add double-sided tape to the back center. And if you can see, I am extending past the notches so that when we fold it over, we can secure it in place. I, I honestly can't believe I didn't make a full tutorial for this bag. I've made it live in the So Whatever group um, like a million times. So I guess that's why I thought like it was covered, no worries. But this is one of my favorite patterns to make. Um, it's really fun if you have some fabric you wanna showcase in the center. It's just, it's so fun. Okay, so I'm folding in the outside edges into the center. And a little pro tip is you don't want to peel off all your tape, even though I did the first one, because we are going to top stitch that. And I included different ways you can top stitch. I've done both methods and I have not heard from anyone about a certain way not holding up. You just wanna make sure that you use rivets if need be. Okay. So there we go. They look good. So I'm gonna set my stitch length to 4.5. And I'm going to start stitching at that notch, come up back around and stop there as well. Back stitch, come up, turn, come back down, back stitch, 
And then instead of like cutting it off my machine and stuff, I'm just going to lift up and keep going. And then I'll trim them all down in the end. And luckily a lot of this top stitching is gonna be hidden when you fold it over, but this acts as another layer of reinforcement for your strap connector. So the vinyl could possibly tear with the weight being put on the bag, but the thread you're using kind of acts as a suspension method to help reinforce. Okay, so then you can use your thread zapper or just a pair of snips to cut down all that thread. Ooh. And that's why you don't want to peel off all your tape too early. That right there. I just love these connectors. Okay, all right. So now we can grab our three quarter inch wide hardware. And I am using simple square rings for this bag. rainbow finish. I do sell hardware on my website, but you of course do not need to purchase hardware from me. There's tons of different options. And then we're going to fold this over one inch. So you can see there that gives tons of reinforcement. You can add a rivet through there without hurting it. And you can still easily access all the parts for top stitching. And then to make sure they're the same, I kind of lay them together and then fold. Yeah? Really? Don't jump up here, please. Oh, goodness gracious. I don't have any kids yet. I just have cats. Yeah, you're a cat. Okay. One more to go. Please don't jump up here. Please don't. You're going to do it anyway. All right. So now I've got those all folded. Thank you. And we have a little bit of tape peeking out, but I want to be able to place these and not worry about them shifting at all. So I'm going to add some more tape to the back. But very important, you don't want to add tape higher than what you're going to top stitch. Um, I used to just add tape to the whole thing, but the tape does get exposed. Yeah, right there. And then um, like dust and debris can kind of stick to it after it's been sent to the owner of the bag. So you don't want that. Sir, go to your spot. Thank you. I really don't want cat hair all over this bag may contain cat hair. All right, so our connectors are prepped and we're ready to attach them to the exterior of the bag. All right, so even though I am going to be cutting, yeah, cutting this panel, I've marked where I'm gonna cut it, but I'm going to attach my strap connectors first and then cut it and attach everything. So if you're wondering why I have two large pieces, that's why. Okay, so the strap connector is going to go one and a half inches from the top of the main panel. So I'm laying my ruler down one and a half inches from the very top. And then two inches from the side. And the piece that is going to be lined up is that center connector. Oh, you cannot see. I will do the other side. My bad, my bad y'all, my bad. We're not professionals. Okay, 
So two inches, one, two, and then I'm placing the square at that two inches and setting it in place. And that double-sided tape really helps hold it in place. So it's kind of hard to see. I'm using like a navy blue vinyl. It's showing up a little bit black, but that is the connectors. So I'll go ahead and place both and then I'll zoom you guys in while I attach them. One and a half from the top. One and two, place. And you don't have to use these connectors. There are instructions for using some that are a little bit simpler. Yeah, no, I like to do this, I think. Okay. Got those in place. You with me? Still holding in there? All right, so my stitch length is still set to a 4.5. I want to keep it consistent with the rest of the connector. Let's get some more light in there. There we go. Now you guys can see. So I'm going to start at this side of the connector. Make sure I'm on the fabric. back stitch and then go slowly over the center and then when I get to the center I like to do a little back stitch as well again just for reinforcement and then once you get your needle into that corner you're gonna pivot back stitch again and just go really slow down the outer edge and then again I like to back stitch when I get to that corner pivot back stitch and then come up to the top and then back stitch once I get to that corner and then you can use your thread zapper or trim it down and that's what it looks like in the end and then we'll add a rivet right there Something you can do if you're feeling confident or you want to add some more accent is um, I wouldn't necessarily go around this part again because then you're perforating the vinyl and it could actually weaken it. Um, but you can kind of turn around and go back around to add two lines of stitching. That always looks fun. Um, not sure if you can see I've got a little fraying piece of thread there. So I'm going to take my thread zapper and just push it down. You can see it just melts it away. Um, so I'm going to show you guys one more sewing of this at a different angle just in case that one wasn't the easiest to see and then I will do the other half off camera. I never really realized how colorful my machine is. <laughs> All right, camera's a little bit close so I apologize if I hit it. So starting in that corner, back stitch, and you want to make sure that you're pressing down here so that you don't hurt your fabric and you catch it all. Again, I like to add a back stitch for reinforcement. I want to land in the corner, lift up, and turn, back stitch. Quite at the corner so I'm just using the hand wheel to get the needle exactly where I want it to go and continuing alrighty and that's that on that so you could tie that off if you wanted to and again I've got that little thread Fraying, so I just melt it down. You could also use a lighter. You don't have to use a thread zapper. Um, but that's that, and we'll add rivets in a little bit. Let me go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so I've got my holes punched for the rivets, and I've got my post and my cap. 
I'm using nine millimeter double-sided rivets. So what I like to do is the post, which is the male piece, I like to put that into the back and then set the cap on. And you should hear it kind of click in place. And do that for both sides. Um, and then I'm going to use my setter to set them. All right, so we're gonna get started on our hidden zippered pocket. So I need the piece where I've marked out that line. I need my zipper, which I didn't prep yet, but I'm gonna grab my zipper pull. And I need my zipper tabs, as well as my zipper lining pieces. So there's a whole list of pattern pieces you'll need cut out and that's in the pattern description and stuff it's on the page oh i didn't grab my flappy bit oh, where is my flappy bit where is my flappy bit oh where 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 there it is is my flappy bit i could not finish it okay let me grab my zipper. All right, so when I'm working with zipper by the yard, I like to iron it first. I mean, honestly, any zippers, I like to iron first. Okay, got the pull attached. And then I'm going to just gently use a lighter to prevent any more fraying, just in case. All right, and then we've got our hidden pocket flap. We're folding the short side edges in half an inch, which is the exact width of some double-sided tape, in case you were wondering. So, it should now measure about eight inches wide, perfect. Um, and I did note in the pattern, if you're using zipper tape, you wanna cut it to eight inches. So a little pat on the back for past me, adding that. And then we're going to fold this in half. So the long raw edges are on the top. And I'm just gonna use these clips to help hold it in place. And you could use a piece of tape at the top if you wanted, but Again, I'm just going to use some clips to help me hold it. And we're going to sew this down. So long raw edges at the top and you can see there's no raw edges anywhere else. And we're just going to sew around the whole box really. But I like to start at the sides that are going to be seen first because the top with raw edges we're just going to baste across that. Trim that all down. And there is our flap. You can use vinyl for this piece or you can use cotton fabric. Either way, doesn't, doesn't work, doesn't matter. It will work either way. So there's that. We're using our zipper and take the zipper tab right sides together and a half inch seam allowance. And you're gonna do that to both sides attaching your zipper to the zipper tab. Okay. And then we're gonna lay that open and top stitch. So we're gonna top stitch through here on the vinyl. Stitch length at 4.5 to keep it consistent. And then a 
instead of cutting this off of my machine, I'm just going to lift up and sew the other side. So now my zipper tabs are attached. And there are going to be raw ends, not a big deal. Mine isn't super, super straight. Again, not a big deal as long as it's fairly straight. <laughs> So now my zipper piece is about 12 inches and we want to cut off one inch from either side so that our finished size is 10 inches. So I'm going to take my ruler and just measure one inch. And you want to trim off equal amounts from either side so that your zipper will be centered. So what I'm gonna do before I cut is I'm going to measure from one inch line to one inch line. We're good. But I am gonna trim just a little bit less than that, just in case. And you can either keep those scraps for zipper tabs some other day or toss them. Either way. Okay. So now I'm going to cut on this line very carefully, nice and straight. If you are at your cutting board, a rotary cutter might be preferred. And then keep in mind if your pattern is directional that you pay attention to that. So we want the bottom part of the main panel right side up and my zipper face down with my zipper pull to the left. So we're going to lay it like that. So right sides are together. I can see the wrong side of my zipper. And we're going to baste it in place. You can use um, tape to help hold it together or glue, whatever you got to do. I'm just going to use clips and I'm going to really quick just baste it in place. So I'm going to sew like an eighth of an inch from the outer edge. And you shouldn't have to worry about your zipper pull just yet. But if you do, just slide it out of the way. Okay, perfect. We've got it basted. And now we want one of the 10 inch by eight inch lining pieces and we're gonna lay that on top of the zipper. Yep, 10 inch by eight inch. I cut mine a little bit bigger, but I knew it wouldn't matter. So we're laying that right sides together. So this is the wrong side of the waterproof canvas. This is the right side so that when we flip it over, it's wrong sides together. So I'm gonna clip that in place and we're gonna sew it from the opposite side so we can see our baste stitch and come in about an eighth of an inch from there. Let me center that up a little bit better. Like I said, I cut my lining fabric a little bit wider because I knew it wouldn't matter. I'm gonna trim down the excess. Okay. So now I might need to move my zipper pull. So before I get there, I'm leaving my needle in the fabric, unzipping, and then kind of re-straightening everything out, and finishing that off. And then we're gonna turn the fabrics wrong sides together and press and sew along that whole seam through the lining and the exterior. So I'm gonna press this on my iron really quick. And make sure you watch out for your vinyl. You don't want to steam it or hit it with your iron or anything like that. Okay, back stitching. And I'm just folding and pulling everything so it's nice and straight. And sewing across the top. Now, if you do not want to add that little flappy bit, you do not have to. The um, instructions are the same, you just aren't adding that flappy bit. Um, you basically just sew this on and you'd have a zipper in the front. No, no worries. 
Alrighty, place your top stitch pattern piece nine, which is the uh, flappy bit, over the top of the zipper, and you wanna kind of center it out so that it's covering your zipper evenly. You can um, fold these into the center if you need to, but it just kind of looks really cool, a hidden zipper. So we've got, let's see, one inch on that side and one inch on that side. Perfect. And we're gonna baste it in place an eighth of an inch from the top edge. So basically on the basting stitch line I've already made. Then I'm also going to grab a lining piece because that is going to just go right sides together on the back. So all the lining is together. I'm going to grab that now and just clip it. It's another step, so if you want to follow the instructions, you're more than welcome to. And then with the top of the bag, we want it to end up looking like this, so we need to put this face down. So make sure that your connector arrow is pointing up, but your pattern piece is facing down, so when you flip it up, it's the right way. So hopefully that makes sense. Ooh. And line that up with your zipper tabs. That is the most important place, so that everything is nice and even. Okay, and then I can sew that all together. This might be a little thick if you have a domestic machine. So Godspeed, maybe use a cotton fabric for your flappy bit. And then I'm just sewing about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Everything together. Make sure it's going nice and straight. And now top stitching this, all we're gonna do is lift this up, keep our seam facing up and the flap facing down and we're gonna top stitch over all of that. So I'll kind of zoom you guys in for that. Okay. You can trim down all of your extra threads if you need to. But I'm pulling up on this. You want to make sure that you can't see your basting stitch. And uh, unfortunately, I can. So what I'm going to do to kind of correct that is actually fold this panel over it a little bit. Because it's not like it's coming loose. I just baste stitched way too wide. So that's my bad. That's my bad. I'm going to check my zipper really quick so I'm pulling on everything making sure my zipper won't come loose because that I cannot correct by what I'm doing so it looks like everything was caught pretty well actually was it yeah it was but I am gonna just fold this a little little bit hey guys I mess up too it's okay Mess ups are good because you know how to correct them. Okay. So I'm sewing through all those layers. And then what we want to do is flip this over, move my top panel out of the way and sew along the shortest edge of the lining so that we close up that opening. Because of the way it gets sewn together, one piece is longer. So we'll just trim that excess out. And then what I'm gonna do is baste the pocket to the sides. And 
then trim off all the excess lining if there is any excess zipper tabs if you have any and get them so that they're the exact width as the main fabric okay So there is the front panel now. So now we would attach the side panels, but I'm going to show you guys how to add the V-shaped pocket. So if you're not interested, just kind of skip ahead a little bit. Um, just a little tip. If you sewed everything with the correct seam allowances, they should, your side panels should line up. If you didn't use the correct seam allowances, maybe you um, sewed it with smaller seam allowances, that's okay as long as everything feels secure. Just trim from the bottom so that it matches your side panel. So hopefully that little tip kind of helps you guys. All right, I don't know why I love this V-shaped pocket so much, but I do, I cannot help it. So I've got my overlay cut out and attached. I will say, I'll show you guys, I didn't have enough of this fabric, but I knew I was adding an overlay, so I cut out my interfacing to the same size and just, you know, made it work. So a little, little trick for you in case your fabric is smaller than it should be, but you really want to use it. Just kind of see if it'll work with the overlay. I did interface the back side of that front V-shaped pocket to reinforce the snap tab. And so yeah, that V-shape is optional. You don't have to add it if you don't want to, but it looks pretty cool, so totally up to you. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, top stitch an eighth of an inch from the bottom edge and then work our way around. So my stitch length is still set to 4.5. You can use double-sided tape to hold it in place or glue, whatever works for you and just go nice and slow and pivot. You could add piping to this front pocket and it would look so, so cool. If you wanted to challenge yourself, I was going to, and then I was just like, mm, might be a bit much with everything we have going on, like all the different pockets and stuff on this bag, so I opted not to. Totally up to you. Um, and then if you aren't into the raw edged vinyl, um, you could sew a piece of fabric to the vinyl right sides together so along that bottom edge and turn it and then lay it on but it's going to add a lot of extra bulk so just keep that in mind um, so i'm going to continue basting along the top an eighth of an inch this doesn't have to be super pretty because hopefully you won't see it So there is that attached and now I think we need to yep work on adding that magnetic snap which goes on the front panel and the lining of your v-shaped pocket so I'm just using one 18 millimeter magnetic snap the pocket is going to get the smaller part of the snap which is the male part Actually need to get up and mark where that goes um, but the main panel is going to get the female snap so I've already marked a line where that goes so I'm going to lay my washer in the center of that dot and then mark two parallel lines you can add extra reinforcement to this if you want but I've already interfaced the panel with Decaville light so I think it'll be fine Totally personal preference though. So we'll attach 
attach that. You can add double-sided tape, duct tape, or something there to help reinforce it. But there is that snap. Actually, I'm going to be kind of lazy. I'm going to line this up and mark the center with a pen. So I can feel underneath the center of the snap and that's where it's going. It's not as scientific. I would definitely recommend using the pattern piece, but if you're as lazy as I am, this might work. So I've marked out the center. I've marked out those two parallel lines. I'm going to use a seam ripper on those two parallel lines. And honestly, you don't have to add a magnetic snap to this pocket if you don't want to. Um, but the security of it is nice, you know. Okay, so then we add the washer to the back. And we're going to then line these up. So my V-shaped pocket and my lining right sides together. I'm going to add clips. Um, and these rainbow clips are available on my website, but you could also just get regular hair clips if you're curious about them. I love them. You can't use pins on fabric or on vinyl, so I just love the clips. Alrighty. And then I'm piece 10. And we're gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Yeah. So for me, I'm just following the edge of this foot. If you use a little bit wider of the seam allowance, it's really, it's not gonna matter way too much. And you can also mark this out with a ruler before going in if you're not great with seam allowances. Um, I've done that before and that definitely helps. And I'm just back stitching in those corners to help reinforce. But there is that. And then I'm gonna add some snips. Like in that center V, I'm gonna snip it down in the center. I don't know why I thought I could use those. These precision snips will help. So I've snipped in the center so that we can um, fold it nice and flat. You can choose to trim down your vinyl. However, I really like that bulky seam that it gives to the top of the bag. So again, it's all personal preference. You do you. I won't judge you. Just don't judge me. Uh, but then we're going to flip this through, pushing at those corners. And because we use vinyl, if you did, um, you can't use your iron, but you could steam the lining if you wanted to. But I'm just going to add clips all the way around. The Wonder Clips, even though they're knockoff, they hold this chunkier seam a little bit better. Okay, so I'm pushing, pushing in at those corners. Mm, I just love that bulky seam. Feels good. I know I'm weird. Make sure it lines up with your bottom and your edges nicely. But then we're just going to sew across the top edge. Again, I'm keeping it consistent at 4.5 so it matches throughout the bag. Hopefully I don't run out of bobbin thread. I'm still going to backstitch at those corners because that just helps me pivot and get where I want to be. And this is optional, but 
it does help. You just um, lay everything flat and baste around all three open sides. Honestly, I'm hoping to just run out of bobbin while basting. Okay. So there is that V-shaped pocket that we're gonna add to the front. And fingers crossed, it should just kind of clip in place. But what's nice is if you did kind of mess up your placement, you're gonna snap it together first anyway, and then line things up. So let's say if I place my snap just a, a tiny bit too low, once I clip this in place and flip it over, I'll be able to see if I did and then I can just kind of trim that excess fabric. It looks like I did okay, so thank goodness, I would hope so. I am the pattern creator. So my laziness paid off, great. First time for everything, right? Okay, so there is that V-shaped pocket complete. And it's got a snap so that if you were to add something like your phone or whatnot, you know, um, it's pretty secure and it's pretty. <laughs> all right, so now is the time to attach our side panels. So we're gonna need all four of those and they should be cut so that you have two of each side. So the notches are on opposite sides and you need two total. If you guys have made the Peekaboo Beauty Bag, this is a little bit similar to how that gets put together. However, it is a half inch seam allowance. So if you are not great at lining up a half inch seam allowance, I definitely recommend using a ruler. All right, so the way we line this up is our notch is facing the center of the bag. So I'm gonna clip these in place. And I like to clip at the top and bottom, like so, so that they don't move. But you can see this is the center of the bag and there is that notch cut out so that when we fold it open, that becomes the outermost edge. If you are using a really thin vinyl, I would recommend um, adding a little bit of Decaville Light or some kind of non-woven stabilizer to the bag. Um, I've used foam on this pattern and I personally wasn't a fan of how it felt, but if you like foam, you do you. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. So you can see there are, this is the center, these are the outermost edges, and this is the bottom. So when we open it up, here's our top, there's a bottom, notches at the bottom. So half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna stick with a 4.5. Let's hope we don't run out of a bobbin thread, but we might. I like to back stitch over my pocket or zipper tabs or whatever just to help reinforce. Just a little back stitch, nothing too crazy. Again, half inch seam allowance on both sides. Back stitch at the top and bottom. And you're going to repeat that on both sides and then we'll open it up and top stitch. that one done okay notches at the bottom and all of your long raw edges on the side should be touching so if you have your notch lined up wrong you'll you'll be able to tell because then it wouldn't match so if you're trying to do it with the notch on that edge it won't line up with all your fabric so I've warned you how many times now, don't do it. If you did do it though, comment below. 
Also, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, all clipped in place. I can hear that bobbin. It's just like, I've got nothing left to give. Well, come on, run out. Still hasn't run out. All right. Well, you're coming out anyway. Ugh. Still some left, but I'm not chancing it on a top stitch. Okay. Let me replace that. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch and we're going to open up that seam and top stitch through it on the vinyl. I mean, really, you could top stitch wherever works for you, but it's just not the way it was designed to go. So you're gonna open it up and top stitch through that side seam there. So when we open it, top stitch through that side seam. And it creates this really nice lip on the vinyl. So make sure you're pulling apart those layers so that it's nice and straight. You could choose to add two lines of stitching here if you wanted, especially if you added two lines of stitching to your connector, it would kind of mimic it and look neat, but totally up to you. one finished panel. I'm gonna set that aside for now. Keep working on this one. This one is a little bit thicker over that V-shaped overlay. But no major issues. other front panel. So now that you've seen two ways to add a front panel, you could also choose to do nothing on the main fabric. It goes a lot quicker, but I figured what's wrong with more pockets, you know? Um, so we're going to go ahead and add our purse feet, attach the bottom panel, and then we're almost done with the exterior of the bag. Okay. So what I've done is I've marked out where my purse feet go, and that is one inch from the edge of the stabilizer, and then two inches down and six inches from the edge of the stabilizer. So you can choose to add four purse feet, you can choose to add five, you can choose to add zero, whatever you like works for me because I don't care. It's your bag, do what you want. Okay, so then I'm just going to slide the purse feet into the bottom. And you can choose to add a little bit of glue to these just for extra security if you want. I'm going to twist, give me a little purple nurple. And then I'll add the washer. And then I'm gonna add duct tape. And that is going to protect my hands when we turn it from cutting myself on these purse feet. It's going to um, act as another layer of reinforcement as well. 
And honestly, I'm not sure if it does do that, but I like adding it. So I just add the duct tape along the length. And I do leave it long on the sides because we're going to sew it into our seam allowance so that it doesn't start to lift over time or anything. it on the table make sure it's in place and now we have the purse feet attached to the bottom of the bag and our hands are a little protected from the vicious purse feet and we're ready to attach it you can start with either side of the bag dealer's choice doesn't matter but you're gonna lay it flat right sides together and if you've made like the Emily bag or anything like that, you know um, I like to leave those notches so that everything lines up just as it should. And you can clip it in place so that the bottom panel of the bag goes from notch to notch. And you're gonna sew next to that stabilizer, but not through it. Um, stitch length at 4.5 or a five, dealer's choice but smaller is better for construction. Okay, next to, not through, that stabilizer. And the reason you don't wanna sew through it is it's gonna make it harder to top stitch flat if you're sewing through that stabilizer. So then we'll place this flat and top stitch over that seam. If you have a domestic, this might be difficult for your machine with all the layers. So it's not necessary, it just kind of adds a nice look. Okay. Oh, she coming together. Okay, and then we're gonna add our other main panel and line it up with the bottom. And I will show you guys the reason we had to top stitch that pocket closed is because it doesn't go all the way down. So make sure that's top stitched shut. Mm -hmm. Open, make sure that your seam allowance is pointing towards the bottom, kind of together. Okay. And there's that, and we'll just kind of Make sure we've got all of our extra threads snipped. Make sure there's nothing that needs our immediate attention before we sew this all together. So you're gonna put right sides together and line up the side seam. And use clips to hold it in place. So there's that long raw edge clipped together and we'll repeat that on the other side. And you're gonna sew this together at a half inch seam allowance using a stitch length of four or 4.5. I wouldn't use anything smaller, especially when working with vinyl because it could perforate. Okay. 
sure you back stitch at the start and the stop, <laughs> the beginning and the end. And then you can square the bottom first before you add the strap connectors. Um, yeah, I'll do it that way. But what we're gonna do, so you see we've got these open sides and we need to square it off. So we're just gonna bring them together. I like to open up that side seam and lay it flat, so butterfly style. Clip it together with the bottom panel. And everything should line up pretty perfectly if you followed those seam allowances. And you're just gonna sew from this line of stitching next to but not through your stabilizer to this line of stitching. Repeat on both sides. And I'll zoom you guys in for that. I almost hit a button on my machine to make the camera film. That wouldn't have worked very well, would it? Okay, I switched my stitch length to a four. And then laying it flat, starting at that out, outer line of stitching, I'm gonna back stitch, come forward, next to but not through the stabilizer. And I'm getting towards that other line of stitching, so I'm gonna back stitch. And that's it. That's all we wanna do. So from there to there, we'll repeat that on the other side. Make sure that seam stays open. That'll make it easier to attach your crossbody strap connector. And that's that on that. So if you're not adding any crossbody strap connectors, your bag exterior is finished. But if you are adding the straps on the outside, I would recommend kind of pressing open that side seam, flattening it out. It's gonna be kind of hard, do not iron. How many times do I have to tell you guys don't iron your vinyl? You know, you listen, you get me. Anyway, I'll do that in a second. Um, but let me get my hardware and my connectors for that ready. And actually, one version of this bag that I made, I added those, um, the same connectors that are on the front to the side. So you can do that if you want, but it's a lot of extra unnecessary work. And it won't be as stable as this with a box stitch. Okay, so I'm adding a piece of double-sided tape down the center of those. These are one inch wide by four, well, two inches wide by four inches, but they'll end up being one inch wide. So I'm folding long raw edges in towards the center. And then I'm gonna add another piece of double-sided tape So long raw edges are in towards the center. Double-sided tape, kind of near-ish the lower half. Peel that off. I'm gonna grab my triangle connector. Um, this is great for crossbody straps, but you could also just choose to do a D-ring if you wanted. And then we're gonna fold this down a little bit further than halfway. So that's the top so that there's plenty of reinforcement here. When this is pulled on, you want tons of vinyl underneath. There's going to be less stress on this half. It's going to be mostly up here, so I don't like to even it out. I like to lengthen that. I will just do two of those. Okay. Again, tape kind of on the lower half. Add your hardware. If you are using a thinner vinyl or you don't trust it, 
You could add Decaville light into that seam. You could add grow grain ribbon to help reinforce it. There's all kinds of tricks to strengthen your bag. But I feel pretty good about this vinyl. So then I'm gonna add one more piece of double-sided tape to the back of that to help me hold it in place. Again, like I said earlier with those main connectors, you don't wanna tape it all the way up top because then it's showing it could get dust and gook attached to it. So just a small bit to help hold us, hold us in place. I'm trying to really flatten that seam. It doesn't want to go. But your bag will sit a lot better if you can get that seam flat. Um, so I like to attach this to the outside of the bag. I think it's a lot stronger than if you were to sew it into the seam. Oh, goodness gracious. And we're going to... Add that one and a half inches from the top in the center. And make sure that your triangle buckle is facing up, not down. That would be bad. Okay, so that's in place. You can see my side seam isn't cooperating quite right. But then we're going to top stitch that on using a box stitch. Zooming you guys in, I had to scoot you over so I could actually sew with my machine. Okay, so I'm opening up that seam with my fingers and sliding this under the machine foot. And starting out at the top, not too terribly close to my hardware so that I perforate it or anything but close enough. And then I'm, gonna, I'm pivoting down and because of my machine's walking foot, I'm gonna add a piece of leather underneath so I don't scratch my hardware. And then I'm taking my hand underneath and flattening that seam some more. And then we'll come down. And then pivot. Making sure that side seam is still flat. So across the bottom, pivot again, come around the top. I want to make sure things are laying flat enough. And then I'm just going to sew a diagonal line. And you can choose to sew two diagonal lines if you want. That's totally up to you. I'm just going to add the one. But you can see here, because we opened up that side seam, it's reinforced even more with fabric behind it. So there is that strap connector. Um, and then if you wanted to add rivets, do not add it through the center because then you're adding holes to the center seam. If you want to add rivets, you can do one here. So long as you're not cutting through your side seam and one here. So a little pro tip. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side and we will get started on the lining. All right, just a quick note. There are... Um, different ways of adding a top to this bag just like I stated in the beginning so there's the magnetic snap there's the dual magnetic snap connector which I love um, and then there's this zipper panel um, so this zipper panel is really cool because it's not necessarily a recessed zipper so you could use this method to add to almost any bag so if you make the Lauren bag and you want that kind of top zipper um, <clears throat> but you don't necessarily want to add a recess zipper. This is a very beginner-friendly way of adding a 
faux cest zipper to your bag. I don't know. It's just a top zipper with a a little bit of width to it. So let's go ahead and get started on that. <laughs> All right, so we have four pieces total for our faux cest zipper panel. It's just a zipper panel. I am lining it with waterproof canvas and I'm using canvas fabric for the exterior that has been interfaced with woven fuse. Might be woven fuse too, I can't remember. But you're gonna fold each end under by half an inch if there's a different way you like to make this zipper panel, you do you. Um, but I like to add my half inch double sided tape to one end and fold it over. And this is just kind of like a hassle free way for me to get everything to stay in place versus using an iron or what have you. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Half inch. And this doesn't have to be the perfect width or anything like that, so long as they're pretty similar. Um, so it should be approximately 14 inches wide. when we're done folding it all. Yep. Yep or do's. So then you can cut, just pull the tape apart. Okay, so then if you cut your fabric directionally, you want to start with one half or the other. So I'm gonna start with this half and grab the correct zipper. Um, but this is where I want to start the edge of my zipper where it will open up and I will attach the other side. So we want to fold the edge of the zipper tape open at like a 45 degree angle square off your zipper basically clip it in place and then we're gonna baste and I recommend ironing your zipper first I know I always like to and then you only want to go as far as your zipper panel and maybe not even that far, especially since you're just basting. And trim off the excess. So we're gonna add one of our lining pieces, right sides together. And I'm clipping so that my clips are on the top and I can see where I've already basted. Now, if our folding wasn't precise, like I can see here, I'm lining it up, this doesn't meet exactly that edge. I can refold it and tape it so that it is the exact size. So it's just kind of easy, hassle-free. So then I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance along that side again. And if we get too close to our zipper pull, we're gonna leave the needle in Unzip it out of the way, re-straighten everything, and continue back down. So there is one half of the zipper panel finished. Well, almost. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this over to my iron and press wrong sides together, laying everything open so that we have half of it ready. So we've got it nicely pressed, and we're gonna fold this over so that wrong sides are together and raw edges are together and just sew across all four sides of this panel. And you don't 
have to sew the raw edge shut, but I like to. So that there's no shifting later. Okay. So we're just going to repeat those steps on the other side. Um, I did add a clip to the end of my zipper because it is zipper by the yard and I do not want it to fray. So if your zipper panel is directional, kind of like I showed, you want to make sure that you lay it to where it's correct, but then flip it wrong sides together and line up those edges of the zipper panel. Use some of these clips. Now again, these are not the exact same size. Hopefully you can see there. But I can just untape what I've done and retape it so that it is the correct size. And I know you might be thinking, like, why don't you just do it right from the start? I don't know. Why don't you just do it right from the start? And I'll pretend I did too. Not my real dad. Okay. So I'm just basing that in place. And then I need to make sure that I square my zipper just like I did on the other side. So I'm going to unzip it a little bit and then just fold this over to match. The reason you have to square off your zipper piece is so that you don't unzip the bag and the zipper pull just flies off. So you need to round it off so that your zipper teeth are in the seam allowance so that when you zip this, they stop. If you have raw teeth like you do on the end here, your zipper pull is just going to fly off. So keep that in mind. Okay, and then we're going to put the lining right sides together. flip it over make sure everything lines up pretty well if you need to start with your zipper unzipped do so because we're sewing at a quarter of an inch seam allowance now not an eighth of an inch so still gonna unzip my zipper tape but make sure you straighten things back up I can re-zip it. Again, lay things straight. Make sure your lining's lined up. And then do not sew past your fabric. So now I can trim all my threads away. Goodbye. Yep. And then we're going to fold this open, press it with the iron, and sew it together. And when I say sew it together, I mean top stitch. <laughs> Any extra threads you want to fold into the center of your zipper panel or trim. to add my zipper end just yet because um, it makes it easier to open the bag to top stitch and everything if it's like that. But what we want to do now is fold it zipper panel end to zipper panel end, clip it, and snip our center. So you've got your tail here that doesn't count as the center. So that is ready to be set aside while we work on the rest of the lining. 
All right, so for this zippered pocket, we're gonna take one of our lining pieces, we're gonna fold it in half and make a crease. And I'm also going to snip the top center because we'll need that later. And then my zipper pocket piece, I'm gonna fold in the opposite way with a center crease. And then we'll mark out a seven inch box. You could choose to add a wider zipper pocket if you would like, just make sure you cut your fabric accordingly. And then we'll place this in the bag as suggested. You can use clips to help hold it or a pin if you need to. Um, I just like to hold my breath and hold the fabric and hope nothing shifts. It usually doesn't. And then we're gonna start at one end of the zipper pocket, back stitch. So forward, you wanna do this as straight as possible. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna back stitch and then I like to just do two parallel lines. You can do a full box if you want, but you know, this works for me, so I don't mind. Well, thank you for breaking on me, Thread. What happened? Okay. No worries. Probably just needs to be oiled and cleaned. Uh, but then we're going to snip the zipper box open and add our zipper. All right, needles re-threaded. Um, I'm going to cut this open. And there are different ways of making a zipper pocket. You're more than welcome to follow whatever method you prefer. You don't have to follow what's in the pattern. I know some people like to use an overlay or um, a facing so that you don't see the raw edges of your zipper tape. So totally up to you. I'm going to press this open and steam, and then we will add our zipper into that opening. All right, so I've got my lining pressed my zipper ready to go. What I like to do when I'm using zipper by the yard is make sure that the ends of my zipper extend way past the zipper pocket so that there is no fraying and no risk of the zipper pull somehow coming off while the user is using the bag. Um, so I also like to keep my zipper pull extended way past the opening that I'm sewing. And I'm gonna continue stitching, making sure my zipper is lined up straight. You can use double-sided tape or glue or pins to help hold your zipper in place. But I've made 40,000 zipper pockets at this point, so I can hold it straight fairly well. And we're only gonna complete three sides of the zipper pocket and then leave the needle in, lift up, and push our zipper pull back in on that bag. And then we can close up that side. And that's it. Nice and easy. Well, I guess that's easy for me to say. And then you can trim your extra zipper that's within your seam allowance. So just that little bit there, so that it's still the same width as your lining fabric. And then we'll add the remainder fabric there. Right sides together. And I have changed how I sew this shut. Um, so we're gonna actually fold up both pieces of the lining by half an inch and sew it all together along three sides because we're going to berth the bag through that opening. And then again, 
This is the bottom. We're gonna fold that half an inch. And sew through all of it. So it kind of closes it up. Um, and then we're gonna trim off just that little bit of excess where we folded it over half an inch. Definitely drop it on the ground. That's always great. Okay, so there's where we folded it. And all we're gonna do is open it up. And that seam should lay nice and flat. So then when we turn the bag, we have this nice opening that we can sew shut. Beautiful. So now if you were following the directions you can add two of these, but I'm going to show you really quick how to add a lining slip pocket to the other side. So the measurements that I used for this are 7 inches by 18 inches. Yep. And I am going to... Okay, so if you've made the Emily bag, this is very, very similar to that. But I'm going to fold the top edge down. And top stitch. Um, if you are using canvas, or not canvas, but um, a cotton fabric to line your bag, you might want to find a different method than this, because you're going to have a lot of raw edges, but with the waterproof canvas, it isn't an issue, because it's not going to fray, and it would start to get way too thick. Um, and then I'm going to use a piece of double-sided tape, just the eighth of an inch, or I mean quarter of an inch wide. And then we're going to peel that tape off and press up. So that we don't have a raw edge there anymore. Okay, beautiful. No, okay. And then we're gonna take our other lining piece right side up. I am gonna fold it in the center and snip the top center. We're gonna need that when we add our zipper. And then I'm gonna fold this in the opposite direction. Nope, same direction, my bad. And then lay it into the center. You can add it up higher if you wanted to, lower, wherever you feel you want to add it. But I am going to make this a sectioned slip pocket, ew. Okay, so we've got it clipped in place. What I'm gonna do is sew that bottom shut all the way across. Okay. And now the reason we're gonna do what we're gonna do is if you were to sew down the center line and add it to your bag. You see these corner cutouts? When we sew that shut, your pocket is gonna sit really weird within that side seam. So we, we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this along that cutout corner. You can see that would be the corner. And I folded it over and we're making a crease. So we're gonna sew down that line so that the pocket doesn't open into the side seam. It's only on its, it stays in its assigned seat. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start by top stitching here. When we get to that crease, we're gonna pivot down, sew along the bottom, come up the top, and then just repeat. So it's kind of like um, playing Pac-Man with your top stitching, it's, it's really fun at least for me. So I'm starting at an eighth of an inch from the top edge. I'm gonna pivot and I'm gonna back stitch. Come down to the bottom and pivot again. And then if you've lost your center crease, you can just kind of refold it to find it. I'm lining up the bottom centers to kind of remake that crease line. And you're going to pivot next to it and come up. And then what I like to do is backstitch and 
and turn it and add one back stitch, like one row of stitching just to reinforce. And then you have two parallel center lines. And it just adds a little bit of drama to your lining. I don't know if you can see those two center lines. And then we we'll finish off with our pivoting. And then go to an eighth of an inch of the top and then trail off the edge of the bag. And so that's what that ends up looking like. And I used a purple thread, which kind of adds some contrast. It doesn't look great over there, but that's going to be in the side seam. You can see now you've got these two pockets that once you've sewn this shut will stay put. Um, so that's, that's the lining pieces completed. So what we're going to do now is, well, grab the piece with our zipper because I like to make it so our zipper pulls close in the same direction. So you can see when this is closed, my zipper pulls here, this is closed, zipper pull is here, and line up your center snips. And now, how I said earlier where you can use this method for almost any bag, you want to cut it so that the finished measurements of the zipper panel are about two inches smaller on either side. So, and if you want to, about an inch and a half, but you have to take into consideration when you top stitch, you need to be able to easily access. And because this bag has like a squared bottom, it's gonna be open it's going to come a little bit in on the sides and just trust me, two inches from either side finished measurements. So a total of four inches smaller. The width of this zipper panel um, is 14 inches and the width of my lining right now is 18 inches. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now I'm going to baste this in place, just raw edges together at the top of the bag and repeat that on the other side of my lining. Grab the center, grab the center. And just kind of double check yourself that your linings are matching up. You don't want one to be over further than the other or anything like that. And then we're gonna baste along the top again, raw edges together. Your zipper panel should be face up while your lining is wrong side up. So basically linings together. You can see the lining of my zipper panel is touching the right side of the lining of the bag. Okay. And then what I like to do is unzip this and bring in the tail of the zipper and clip it to my pull because you do not want to sew through that when you're sewing your lining together. That would be bad. So tuck your zipper in, line up your outer edges, half inch seam allowance at the top, so starting with half an inch and then I'm kind of scaling it a little, little, little bit wider. so that our lining fits real nice. I'm just repeating that on the other side. Half inch at the top, kind of bring that in. All right. So our lining right now is essentially finished. We're not going to sew this just yet because it'll be easier on your hands, my hands as well, if we berth it through the very bottom of the bag. But what we, we want to do is open it up, make sure your berthing hole is open, zipper and all, and flip this right side out. And you 
can kind of unclip your zipper at this point, but if you didn't add a zipper end or anything yet, make sure you clip it so your zipper pull doesn't fly off. So right sides are open. Or, um, yeah, the bag is open, zippers are open, bottom is open. We're gonna grab the lining, put it inside and top stitch it all together. We're in the home stretch, you guys. All right, so I've got my lining wrong side out. Scratch that. I've got my exterior wrong side out. And now I want to place my zipper so that it zips the same direction as my front zipper. So honestly, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we're going to start by lining up the side seams. Clip those together first. I like to butterfly these open, just like we did on the bottom. Mimic that on the top and everything will kind of sit nicely together. I'm using these wonder clips because they hold thicker seams together better. Okay, and then we're going to tuck our zipper in. Make sure we're not gonna sew through it or anything and line up that center seam. Press it open. And this now is going to be the test of our seam allowances. Did we get it right? Does, is there any gapping? Is one smaller than the other? But it looks good. Kind of like to hold it out and clip that helps me see better if there's anything going on like that. So if your lining is too big, you'll have a lot of gathering in the lining and you don't want that. So you'll want to re-sew your lining seams, make them a little bit smaller and see if you can't get it to match up better. If your exterior is too big, you're gonna have gapping on your exterior fabric and you'll need to kind of re-sew that. But I don't see any gapping it may not be like 100% perfect, but there's no, there's no major gapping that I can see. So I'm gonna keep clipping all this together. But leave yourself a place to start top stitching. So I've left like right here kind of spaced open so I can start top stitching there. So I'm gonna switch out the angle for that. So I could hear my bobbin was getting low and I don't want to start top stitching without a full bobbin or at least some kind of security. So I'm switching out my bobbin for a full one. So far I've gone through three. So if you are making this bag, I would recommend three to four bobbins full of thread before you get started, just in case. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna move the camera one more time because I keep hitting it with my knee and I don't like that. Here we go, there we go. You guys can still see and I can sew better. So my stitch length is at a 4.5 and we're ready to get started. You could sew from the lining side down if you wanted or the exterior side down, I should say, with your lining facing up. Whatever works for you go for it. I'm going to do that because this feels easier. Just watch and make sure that your lining and your exteriors are lined up as you're sewing. If you're using a domestic machine and you can take off the main part of your machine so you just have that arm, I would recommend it. Makes it a lot easier. I am using a half inch seam allowance or just about. I'm just sewing around the bag. I like to add a small back stitch to reinforce that side seam where we butterflied it open. And then you can also add a little back stitch where you've added your zipper panel. If you don't want to back stitch too much, again, you could perforate something, but just give it a little reinforcement. If you need to readjust, leave your needle inside the fabric. And 
back to the beginning and I like to trail off my stitching into the seam allowance. So hopefully you can see there like that. Um, we're gonna trim all our excess threads. I do not personally like to trim down my seam allowance. I really like, like I said before, that bulky seam in the top. It just mm, feels nice. So we're gonna birth the bag. Alrighty. So I'm gonna pull the lining out. And then we're gonna grab the exterior. I like to start with one of the bottom corners first. You can see without going through that zipper pocket how easy this really is. Okay, so I'm pushing on the corners of the bottom seam to make sure they're nicely sewn. I didn't miss anything. Kind of pull on your lining to make sure everything is nice and flat. And then if you can, just kind of check around your zipper panel and make sure that you didn't miss any stitching or anything like that. And then what we're gonna do is take our hand inside the zipper pocket and pull out the lining of that. You can see we've got our opening there. And then we're gonna reach in that and grab the bottom, the big open bottom of our bag, pull that through. So now it looks like this. But you can see we've got our side seams and our notches and we're gonna bring that together. So that's the bottom we need to square but we're gonna sew along the bottom seam first and then square those corners. Now we're almost done. <laughs> so I'll show you guys that. Half inch seam allowance, all across that bottom seam. And then here's that corner cut out. You're gonna fold those together and butterfly that seam open. Clip on both sides. And just sew half inch seam allowance again all the way across that. And then here is that other open corner. Bring it together. Pinch it, sh pinch it together. There you go. There we go. And then we're going to sew across there. Okay. And then push the lining back inside your bag. You can trim any extra seam allowances if you want. I like it. I think it gives the bag a little extra... Um, stability, especially with the waterproof canvas, but everybody has a personal preference. So. so what I'm doing now is pressing my lining corners into the corners of the bag. Make sure everything sits nicely. And then I'm going to sew this pocket shut. And you can see the way we've added or sewn the sides of the pocket. It folds over very nicely and very slimly. Is that a word? Whatever. And then I always like to add a little woven label here. You do whatever you want. Doesn't bother me. Um, but I'm just gonna sew straight across there. Back stitching. And you wanna get as close to the edge as possible, but 
not too close that it would come undone or not catch both sides. Okay. Hopefully you can see. And then just stick that back inside. And then I like to zip that pocket shut so that I know I've sewn the zipper pocket. Because I have left it unsewn before. <laughs> okay, so now that's left to do is the top stitch. And we don't want to leave our zipper up like this. We're going to fold it down into the lining. And that's going to give us that like faux recessed zipper look. So if you have a domestic, this can get pretty bulky. But again, I really love all those layers in that top seam. Just feels so luxurious and really helps give the bag um, some nice stance. Okay, so I'm just flipping around. You want to pull your lining down as far as it'll go. Make sure your strap connectors are folded down as well. And this is one reason I don't like using foam is because it can get really thick at this top stitch if you do decide to use foam. But again, everybody has a personal preference. Um, so I encourage you to kind of experiment and find out how you like it. <laughs> There's a little bit of a flaw on this zipper panel you guys might have seen when I was putting it together. And I was like, I think I'll catch that in the seam allowance, so I'm not too worried about it. And uh, lo and behold, I did it. Okay. Now, if your seams are a little bit too thick in areas and your machine might have trouble top stitching, you can take some clamps. Um, uh, it's a glass breaking tool that I have. You can take this and very gently press with it, try not to indent or tear, and that'll help compress the layers. Or if you wanted to, you could leave it clipped for a little bit totally up to you, um, but that's how our bag is looking. I love it. Um, and we're just going to top stitch around the outside using a stitch length of five. Personal preference. I'm going to switch the angle so you can see better. Yeah. All right. Make sure that your zipper is out of the way. When you're top stitching, I like to start at a side seam. About an eighth of an inch away. Make sure your threads are in a place you can see them. Start with a little bit of a back stitch and just go nice and slow, leaving your needle in if you need to reposition anything. Unclip. And now I'm getting to where the height is changing, so if you need to use a Gina Majig or a hump jumper or something, grab that. And now I'm coming up against. Another height change. My machine doesn't mind them. I just go nice and slow. It's easier to walk up a hill than it is to run up the hill. I'm so sorry, I don't know what that noise is. There's construction outside. And again, if you haven't changed your bobbin yet, make sure you've got enough thread to finish the top stitch. You can see here my zippers folding up. I want to get that back inside. <laughs> you you want to make sure you do not sew through it. Okay. Okay. And I'm just I like to add little back stitches again on those side seams. Just a little tiny reinforcement. 
coming up on our zipper panel nice and slow gonna add a little back stitch time for me to readjust here so my needle is in we've lost some clips that's okay straighten this out needle in straighten this up so this seam here is pretty bulky so as you can see I'm just kind of pressing on it holding it in place while sewing over it to make sure I don't hurt it. Make sure you know where your starting threads are if you didn't trim them down or anything so that you can match up with it. I like to go a little bit further past them and backstitch and then we're done. You can use your thread zapper or scissors. I'm going to use a little bit of a combination so you can see um, a little bit where they start and stop. And so I'm just going to take my threads up very gently, press on that thread, otherwise you could hurt your vinyl. And now with the waterproof canvas, you can test this first on your own, but it shouldn't be flammable. So you can just take your lighter and you can see here as well, I've got a little bit of my zipper showing. It's gone. Poof. Literally up in flames. <laughs> so all that's left for me to do is finish off the end of my zipper as well as add the straps. So here's a little preview of what the bag looks like. My front flap isn't the prettiest because like I said, I didn't quite baste it in place just right, um, but there is that V-shaped pocket. Super nice. And then here's what the top zipper looks like. So it's not quite a recessed <gasps> zipper panel, but it is a nice zipper panel at the top. And you can see there isn't a whole lot of room on the sides, but you can see that when it's full of stuff, it's going to sit that certain way. Um, so I'll go ahead and add the zipper end with you guys really quick and clip on the handles. Okay, so these zipper ends that I designed are some of my absolute favorites. Um, I don't mind how long this zipper is, but I'm gonna trim it just a little bit. I'm gonna take my lighter and make sure it doesn't fray. Just give it a little, little help. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac glue to help secure my zipper end, but this is how giant it is. I love it so much. <laughs> and it does come with a magnet, or not a magnet, it comes with a screw. So I'm putting that screw on a magnet so I don't lose it while we're getting everything prepped. So I'm just going to fold my zipper ends under a little bit. Just like that. So here's what it looks like from that side. And I'm gonna add a little bit of glue onto the inside of this. So you don't wanna add it too much, but you do wanna add some because of how large this is. And Fabri-Tac just never wants to stop once it starts. Okay. So you can see there's glue inside. What's nice about Fabri-Tac is if you get it on the outside of like metal, it wipes off pretty quickly. Okay. So we can remove the clip, kind of hold that with our hands in that same shape and then just insert this, push it all the way down. It's pretty far in there. And that Fabri-Tac will take a little bit to dry, but we can add our screw. So I'm using this screwdriver from Amazon. I do have links in my favorites blog post, which is linked down below. 
And we'll just add that all the way in. Keep going, don't stop till it's flush. So it's not quite flush, I can still feel the rough surface. So we're just gonna go a few more turns and it's in. And then I always like to, you can either wait a little bit or you can tug on it right now. So it's not coming off, no matter how much you weight you put on it. <laughs> so I was very surprised at how well these worked and they just look so chunky and beautiful. Um, but those are the XL zipper ends. And then you can just tuck that inside your bag, like so. So I'm gonna have the handles and um, I'm gonna rivet those off camera, but you can rivet them on however you'd like. Hi, that's me, how's it going? Okay, ah, it's so cute. So now this is personal preference. If you added the double-sided handles, you could put it so that the vinyl faces out. When you're holding it, but when the um, straps are laying down, the fabric lays out. So you can see my vinyl is folded over. And when you're holding the bag, the canvas is touching you. So I think I'm gonna do it that way. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. And I'm just gonna rivet these on. Um, yeah. So these are the little grab handles. Normally I do like 24 inch to 28 inch, but I just thought these little grab handles would be nice. And then you can see when the handles are laying flat, you can see that little peak of that same fabric. So totally personal preference up to you, but She's done. I'm gonna rivet these on, like I said, off camera, but I hope you guys enjoyed making this bag. I will have another tutorial up soon of making the Petite Elaine, which is a happy little accident um, that my tester, Nikki, came up with. Um, tester, but also very good friend. And she didn't have enough of her exterior fabric, so she had to cut it by two inches. And I was like, it's so perfect. So the Petite Elaine is the same size, however, She's two inches shorter, so it's just, it's a nice size for people who don't want like this big massive bag, because I know I make big bags, but I like big bags and I cannot lie. So there's what this looks like. Oops, sorry. It's a great crossbody, especially if you don't add foam, um, because then it's just a little more form fitting. So totally up to you. There is the bottom, and I'll open it up and show you guys what the inside looks like. So there are slip pockets that stay in their assigned seat, and our big open zippered pocket, and this zipper that was actually, you know, pretty darn easy. 